Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me on IPO Market Watch. If this is the first time you're checking out IPO Market Watch, it is a channel on YouTube that covers initial public offerings, every single IPO, but we also cover everything else also. Stocks already trading, cryptos, exchange traded funds, everything, but guaranteed IPOs. So looking back how past IPOs are today, maybe I'll do this more often. Let me know in the comment section below if you think I should do this more often. What we're gonna focus on is on a uh, on an initial public offering that we covered last year, right? So we covered this last year and I was very, it was actually one of the first IPOs I covered because my channel started last year in YouTube for the first time and it was one of the very first IPOs that I covered. And I was very, very bullish on it. I was very happy and I was, you know, I told you guys in that video that I'm very excited, I wanna buy this, this is a cool IPO and so on. And we, I reviewed it and then I analyzed it in that video. It is Dunn and Bradstreet. So what has happened to Dunn and Bradstreet since then? Well, Dunn and Bradstreet went public in June of 2020 and they raised $2 billion. This was a no small IPO, right? Big, big one. And they so far they produced positive results in Q3 of 2021 and slightly increased their guidance for Q4, saying that in Q4 we'll do a little better. So Dunn and Bradstreet was founded to provide business information such as company size, financials, credit background, to assist other businesses in their research activities. And you can check out their website if you want for free. They're, they give some information for free and, and you get an idea of what, what this company is about. The firm counts more than 135,000 clients worldwide with 90% of the Fortune 500 companies and 60% of the global 500 companies being clients to Dun & Bradstreet. And I mentioned that in that IPO last year, the review, and I said, you know what, this sounds pretty interesting and their financials weren't bad and I just thought this is a great long-term buy. So the firm acquires large and medium enterprise customers through an in-house dedicated direct sales and marketing force focused uh, on specific solution geographies. All right, we're going to look at their graph in a little bit to see how they've done so far. The company also provides numerous self-service tools for small businesses to update their information or subscribe to a variety of online services. And the graph is right here. Since they went public, they went public at $25 and something, $25.50, $26. It was around there where, the, where they went public. And um, I bought, yep, I sure did. I bought a $25. I it had dropped a little bit to $25-ish, I remember, and uh, I bought it. And am I holding till today? Yes, I am. Why? Because I don't like selling at a loss. I don't, I just don't, I hate that. And plus, for uh, also for the reason that what I do is I try as much as possible to pick awesome companies, the companies that I think in the long term will be fine. So if they turn, if my, if the stock turns red, I'm not going to be worried because I feel that it'll turn around. They'll just have to wait. It'll turn around. And it and that's just how I invest. In, and through the years, it actually works for me because uh, I can go a year seeing my stock red, but I have a lot of patience and I'll get the profit I want in the end. So I'm waiting for Dun & Bradstreet to turn things around. Um, some people... I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think they'll ever turn things around? They're at eighteen dollars and thirty-four cents now. So they've went down eight dollars and seventy-six cents since last year that they went public. No problem. Uh, I'll wait another four or five years. No problem. Uh, but I don't think I need to wait that long. I'm pretty sure they'll turn things around sooner than five years. Uh, financial highlights: GWAP, right? Revenue. All right. Financial highlights. Let's look at that. So the revenue in the third quarter of 2021 was five hundred forty-one point nine. Let's say five hundred forty-two million dollars, right? Which was up. 22%, 21.9%, right? That's that's a 22% 22% increase. Uh, net income, 16.6 .6 million dollars versus the 16.3 million in Q3 of 2020. Diluted earnings per share, 0.04 cent. So it's four cents. All right. Uh, slightly slight increases, but it, it is on the positive side. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why it's dropping but market cap at 8.1 billion enterprise value 11.6 billion price sells 3.9 as of now right this isn't the these are not the metrics of dun brassy when it was public as an ipo these are the metrics today uh price to sales 3.9 enterprise value to sales uh 5.6 ev to EBITDA is 19.4 free cash flow is 544 million dollars which is awesome Revenue growth rate is 20.9%. That's not bad. And earnings per share is negative 13 cents. So in its last call, in its last earnings call, they raised their uh, guidance for Q4 slightly. Uh, management highlighted strong growth in North American region due to higher retention, increasing pricing power, and major new client additions. Also, the CEO noted that the company's risk and market solutions had 
has seen demand growth due to increased supply chain risks, right? Um, we can see here in the third quarter highlights, revenue growth primarily driven by risk solutions and finance solutions due to new business and increased wallet share of existing customers. And you can see here the finance and risk, sales and marketing, 363. Um, that was Q3 2020. Q3 2021, $374 million. Adjusted betas for Q3 2020 here, there was 1% uh, increase for Q3 2021. Adjusted beta margin, 100 BPS, 50.6 Q3 2020, 49.6% for Q3 2021. So the adjusted beta increase primarily uh, was driven by higher revenue, partially offset by higher data processing costs. We can see here the international th third quarter highlights are doing very well, right? Look at Q3 2020, 82.4 million in the revenue, right? 167.8 million for Q3 2021, the international, right? So it's doing awesome. Revenue growth of 105%, right? Or 5% excluding bin sold, driven by strong growth in finance and risk and sales and marketing solutions across all markets. The organic, the organic revenue growth from Q3 2020, 444 million, 541.9 million in Q3 2021. I think that this company is awesome. I still really believe in the long-term potential of this company. It's only been about a year since it went public last year. Uh, no worries, no problem. Um, a little over a year, uh, no problem. Uh, I can I can definitely, um, so looking back at Dun & Bradstreet, yes, it is lower than what it IPO'd for the long term. I'm still bullish on it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you guys all the best. Take care.